Thank you very much uh, for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for joining me for a second time. Hurricane conditions are likely now for some of us, as I was talking about this morning, uh, some conditions are there for strengthening. I am seeing that, so I wanted to give you a new video. So please, if you can, take the time to share this information. I do appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing, liking the videos, uh, but more importantly, of course, getting the word out there about this uh, system. Antigua and Barbuda in Guadalupe, the uh, couple of the spots that are most likely to have the hurricane conditions because of Tammy, which is strengthening. And again, the big focus, the water temperatures with it, the water is so warm where it's about to head over. I want to show you that in a moment. So hurricane conditions for parts of the Northeastern Caribbean. I want to break that down island by island in this video, uh, whether you're a big island, small island, I'm doing my best to keep you covered with this. The timing for the hurricane conditions would be Friday night and early Saturday. I'll show you that as I swing through one of our computer models. Uh, mudslides, which would mean homes would be at risk, of course. Flooding could lead homes to be at risk. And uh, as far as the winds go, we're going to have some power loss. Some spots may cut off power ahead of time and watching out for some wind damage with this as it moves in. Now, a small shift means a big difference. You know how these systems go. One island could be like, where the heck is this storm? There's not a whole lot. An island over, we could be dealing with hurricane conditions. It's gonna be a fine line with this system. That's just how it goes. I'll do my best to kind of fine tune that for you. So here we are now, here's this a big area. This is Tammy. The centers to the northwest, there is some wind shear, not a lot, but there is some wind shear that is kind of pushing the tops of this down toward uh, the south and uh, east. And with that said, it's uh, not as organized as it could be. But as this goes over, it just moves a little bit more to the west, it's actually going to run into warmer water temperatures where it could get stronger and then move right into Guadalupe, very close to Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, watching St. Kitts and Nevis. So uh, I'm going to break this down further hang with me. So here's here's the track. Now, Puerto Rico, as I mentioned this morning, we're in monitor mode. We're not in action mode. If it holds as it is now, the action would be off toward the east of Puerto Rico. Right on the edge of the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on this. Any little shift, as I mentioned, makes that big difference. But the center of this could come right over Guadalupe, right over Antigua and Barbuda, very close to St. Martin, St. Bart's, and Anguilla by uh, tomorrow night and Saturday. That's where the center could go. If the center goes there, save us. Stacia, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, even down through uh, Dominica, uh, we'll be dealing with some at least tropical storm conditions right on the edge of those hurricane conditions. So with that, we have now hurricane watches that are up for Guadalupe. They will be switched to hurricane warnings. I do strongly believe they should be switched to hurricane warnings and they will soon. Uh, I believe hurricane conditions will move into Guadalupe. In those hurricane uh, watches, and warnings may eventually include Antigua and Barbuda. Once again, I do believe they should. Anguilla, St. Martin uh, over toward uh, St. Bart's, Sabastasia, St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, tropical storm watches, and those will be switched to warnings. Dominica through Martinique right now, uh, we have tropical storm watches, and again, some warnings uh, will be issued as this continues to move in. St. Lucia, again, watching St. Lucia and Barbados, on the edge of this, again, a lot of it will be just north and east, but of course, watching it. Here's the projected wind field on the current heading. And you see here, this kind of core here, kind of purplish pinkish shading, that would be some hurricane wind. So if you just kind of follow the track, that would move hurricane conditions into Guadalupe, very close to Montserrat and right through Antigua and Barbuda, very close to St. Martin and Saba, uh, and uh, or rather very close to St. Martin and St. Bart's, and then right through Anguilla. So that's why I'm mentioning hurricane conditions are more and more likely with this system. Now, this is what I showed in the previous video, and it holds anywhere from the British and U.S. Virgin Islands all the way down through Barbados, right on the edge of St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and St. Lucia. Everyone there in, in between the, in action mode. Uh, taken perhaps in case you have those tropical storm conditions. But I also mentioned this morning that I would be able to soon kind of zoom into certain locations that would be more of the uh, bullseye, so to speak, for this system. And that's what I'm pointing out here. This is where hurricane conditions are possible, if not likely, Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bart's, uh, over toward Antigua, Barbuda, right through Guadalupe. And again, Sabastasia, St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, 
on the edge of the hurricane conditions. So take some of those extra preparations tomorrow night into Saturday winds of 120 kilometers an hour or 75 miles per hour right about there at least some gusts to right about there on top of the winds. Of course, we have that rain threat and we'll be watching out for the uh, mudslide threat as we go forward. So looking at some of the modeling now, this is one of the latest models. This is right where the European and the American model have it. They're pretty gelled together at this point. Very similar. I think it's going to be a little bit more off into our direction, which isn't good, a little bit more to the west. So you see here, this would be by tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock. That would be the center of this, potentially a hurricane at that point. But again, I think it's gonna be a little bit more like right here. So again, you take this model, shift it a little bit this way. This is a computer. And then I look at everything in the environment. And uh, again, I think this here will be more so over here, very closer on top of Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Bart's, and Antigua and Barbuda. This is Saturday at three in the morning. So overnight tomorrow night, very early Saturday. And then the system would lift to the north through the day on Saturday. Still some feeder bands would be clipping us by, could get some gusty winds, but the worst would be shifting up to the north at that point. So same thing, this is that computer model. And again, I think this core of winds will be just a little bit over here. Small shift, big difference. A couple kilometers or miles makes a big difference between nothing or tropical storm or hurricane conditions. A little bit of red getting in there. Those are the hurricane winds. But again, I believe this will be uh, pretty much on top of some of our islands, Antigua, Barbuda, the core of this, uh, starting to get closer near Guadalupe, Antigua, Barbuda by tomorrow night. And then it starts to work in near uh, St. Martin, St. Bart's, and Anguilla. By the time we get into very late tomorrow night and Saturday morning, that's when some of the worst winds will be. Saturday morning, right around six o'clock near Anguilla with those hurricane conditions. And then lifting up to the north uh, 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 as uh, it is on this heading. Now, that would keep the heaviest of weather away from the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, but very close. If it shifts a little bit closer, that would draw tropical storm conditions in. That's what I was saying. Uh, we need to be more of an action mode in the Virgin Islands, but still just monitor mode as we get back toward Puerto Rico. And again, here's the Dominican Republic, Haiti over here. This would all be off to the east of there. The water temperature is a big factor along with the wind shear. That was my concern. It is about to run into this kind of pinkish shading here with those water temperatures, 30, almost 31 degrees Celsius, mid 80 that is conducive for strengthening. And it's not just the water at the, uh, the top of the ocean that is warm. The depth of the warm water is very substantial. That's the heat content. So even as it churns up more water, uh, it's actually going to bring up warm water. So it's just going to still have some of that fuel uh, to uh, kind of work with and strengthen. So you see the models, a lot of these bring it right over the islands, what I was just uh, talking about. So, uh, and then eventually a curve. Here's Bermuda, should stay to the east of Bermuda, but I'll watch out for anything. These models here are not quite as reliable, the ones that bring this near uh, the U.S. and British Virgin uh, Islands. But again, we've seen more of that shift as expected, as we've talked about here on this channel, more to the uh, west. So that's what I'm going to be watching out for. Now, this is a little shift from this morning. These are the computer models over time, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, 96 hours out on time. More of them are in the yellow shading, making this a hurricane versus uh, uh, the green shading, which is a tropical storm. I believe they're starting to kind of uh, factor in a little bit lesser wind shear. And again, those very warm water temperatures that this is about to go over. So uh, National Hurricane Center on that thinking as well. Uh, their forecast track is also a little bit to the west of where the European and the American model is. And that would bring those tropical storm or hurricane conditions uh, right in. As far as the heavy rain goes, now I, uh, you could check my previous video. I went island by island a little bit more, but you can see again, this, this would be terrible if this worked in right on the edge of that. Antigua, Barbuda, Guadalupe, we're right on the edge of 150 millimeters of rain or more. And that's why I've been mentioning that mudslide threat. And then, as I mentioned, some of us are going to get not a whole lot, nothing out of this, but others, if this just shifts a couple kilometers, then we've got a bigger issue with the flooding and uh, with what we're going to deal with with some of the mudslides. This back here, I'll get into that in a moment. That is Norma. This little flare-up is not organized, but I've been watching that. That's been bringing us some showers and storms in parts of the Northeastern Caribbean, not really tied to Tammy. Also near the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas, we've had some rain. And over toward Hond Honduras, we've gotten hit 
hit so hard. Roatan with some heavy rain the last several days. Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. I've been watching that. So here's the broader picture. Central America flooding, not tied to Tammy. Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Tammy not coming into our direction. Better chance of showers, Cayman Islands. Couple showers and storms today in Jamaica. I want to get over toward Hurricane Norma in just a second. And then watching this, as I mentioned, this will be a little bit closer than what this model is projecting as we get into Friday and as we get into Saturday. Then as we get into Saturday itself, Still watching out both tomorrow and Saturday for this heavy rain in Central America. Giving you that heads up, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, more flooding through Panama. And then, of course, all eyes on Tammy as we go over the next couple days. This here, a major hurricane. This is Norma. Winds at 130 miles per hour. This thing is super strong. It really flared up. Once it lifts to the north and stalls some, it is going to weaken a little bit. I mentioned the heat content with Tammy. Well, the water appears a little bit cooler in the heat content is not as substantial. The warm water doesn't go down as far, so it'll churn up some water, but it will eventually bring up some of the uh, cooler water. So you can see here though, but over toward Cabo San Lucas, uh, making some of those hurricane preparations. We'll hope for some weakening down the road as we work our way forward. This is by Friday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon. Tropical storm conditions moving in to the Southern uh, Baja, California area. And then uh, this is going to be a pretty slow mover. So as we go from uh, Friday uh, afternoon into Friday night, starting to make that curve, but this is by Saturday morning. Still tropical storm conditions are Cabo San Lucas and then tropical storm conditions trying to work into Mexico. There'll be some of that weakening. And then as we go through the weekend by Sunday, some of that moisture could feed into parts of New Mexico and Texas where it is desperately needed. So uh, let's recap. Hurricane conditions, Northeastern Caribbean, for some of us. So watching any of these track changes, the timing would be Friday night into early Saturday. Mudslide, wind threat, small shift, a big difference. As you can tell, I'm doing my best to stay on top of it for you. Awareness is the number one thing. So thank you for subscribing and sharing this channel. Please be safe. I'll go through the comments throughout the day. Have a good rest of your day.